high school, um, I actually got into choir, and uh, my sisters who actually got me into it. She actually paid me and my friend five bucks if we would be in choir. <laughs> And at the time, five bucks sounded pretty good, so we tried it. And through that, I met uh, my best friend, Carter Albrecht, who actually is an unbelievable musician. And he's kind of the guy that got myself and uh, three or four of our friends together, and we started playing. And I didn't play an instrument, uh, but he was a world-class piano player, and he could pick up any instrument and just start playing it. So after high school, um, you know, we were in a band in high school, and. Uh, but then college came and I mean we all went literally five different directions and so we just split up we never played again together um, we stayed in touch but yeah that was the end of us the the other experience that really defined who I became as a musician was um, Carter and I in high school started going to youth group at Central Christian Church here in Wichita and at the time Rich Mullins was uh, involved heavily in uh, the music program there and Carter was actually in his band for a while so Rich at the time was the biggest Christian artist on the planet so that was just an incredibly huge blessing to be able to be around him for a couple of years I wrote a lot of songs in college and after college and uh, kinda got to the point where I wasn't sure where it was going and then actually something major happened in my life so that was when Rich Mullins was killed in that car accident and that was back in I believe 97 and that really is the I, I actually kind of was thinking about this a while back but that's really the main thing that sort of pulled me away from music so then unfortunately um, a few years later Carter was killed tragically and that was just one more um, thing that you know just pushed me away from music and I actually even like I didn't even listen to music for like 10 years I just didn't care anymore so that takes us full circle back to today and why we're here about two years ago so this is I'm 47 now so about the age of 45 so right at 20 years after everything kind of happened after I you know decided to just kind of hang up music um, I was again a youth pastor part-time here at Grace Point Church in Wichita and I could see that coming to an end so I really uh, did a lot of soul searching and praying and trying to figure out what I was going to do again and I just kept kind of having God say well get back into music ministry and um, I, I didn't really understand how I would do that again or what the approach would be um, and I don't like getting in front of people and singing that's probably the biggest reason uh, like I said I was a backup singer I always felt that way about myself so I don't like being in the spotlight and so I think that God uses that a lot. I think that God tries to take our weaknesses and turn them into strengths. So this is a huge step for me. I mean, it's a, it's a big leap of faith. And um, so really, I guess the, the reason all this came full circle was as the, the times we are going through right now are some strange times. And um, the song that I wrote was called Strange World. And it's, it was written 20, 25 years ago. I mean, it talks right off the bat about the very highs and the very lows of the life that we go through. Um, and as you progress through the song, um, it just it basically just focuses on that. It focuses on um, the world we live in and how tough things can be. Um, and but it's I think the song has a positive message. It talks about uh, you know you're going to be eventually at some point in your life you know you're going to be standing in judgment. And it, that's really what it's about. It's it is it's got a Christian theme to it, but it's not what I would consider a Christian song, because when you hear it, you're probably not thinking about that. You know, you're thinking more about the secular world, and and that's what it really is. It's a Christian view on the secular world, and most Christian artists don't write secular songs, and so they don't cross over. That was that the big thing is I want to be a Christian artist, and I want to be someone who sings about God and gets up there and sings praise and worship songs, you know, and, and sings songs that lift him up. Um, but at the same time, I like to have the view out there of what's really going on in the world. Because as Christians, a lot of times we have a very narrow-minded view of the world and our little bubble, you know. So that's what I'm trying to do is just reach more people. Getting this, like I said, getting this song published is a lifelong dream of mine. So that alone is the accomplishment. I don't care what happens after that. 
Um, I don't I don't foresee anything happening honestly I believe that this song will be out there people will like it and it'll just go away it'll always be out there but I don't expect it to get popular or anything like that I'm trying to follow God's plan and whatever that is and this is what I feel it is so hopefully there will be more and uh, and I just hope people enjoy the song and that's what it's all about I don't really care uh, about people's opinions. Um, if they hate it, they can be haters, that's fine. I mean, it's no big deal, you know? Hopefully more people like it than hate it. But there'll be haters, there's always haters. So anyway, that's uh, that's pretty much it. I mean, I'm just happy to have it done and have that accomplishment out there. And um, hopefully it, you know, at least brings some positive vibes. And uh, yeah, 